First item on our agenda for the open session is roll call. All right, Commissioner Mun Munoz, is that correct? Munoz, present. Yes, okay. Um, Chair Poplowski? Here. Commissioner Ebion? Here. Commissioner Beth Michelle? Here. And Commissioner Harden? Here. Okay, it's been a while since we had a full house. I know it. Ooh. Okay, the uh, second item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of the February 16, 2022 commission meeting. Do I have a motion? I'll move. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of February 16, 2022. Uh, roll call. Chair Poplowski? Aye. Commissioner Ebion? Aye. Commissioner Beth Michelle? Aye. Commissioner Harden? Aye. And Commissioner Munoz? Aye. Okay, so we have approved the minutes of February 16, 2022. Uh, number three on the agenda is public expression, the opportunity for the public to address the commission on matters not listed on the agenda. Do we have anyone had any calls or anything? I don't see anything. We usually don't have public expression, though we have had a few instances in the last year. Next on the agenda is number four, the employee organization. I don't see anyone here from the employee organizations. We don't have closed session today. So item five, okay. we can move on to six. Classification studies. This is the work of today's meeting. And uh, is Denise running this show here or who's doing that today? Brandy will, she'll be taking over for William. Oh, okay. For reporting out on the, on the classification. Class Good morning, Chair and Commissioners. Brandy Dalzell, Human Resources. Um, our first item on the agenda is the recommendation to approve the classification specification modification of environmental health technician as presented or as modified by the commission. Um, they, the department underwent an audit from the state of California. And in that audit, there was an evaluation of our certified unified program agency, also known as COOPA. And in that, there was a result that our minimum qualifications, both education and experience, needed to be revised. And that's what we have done here. And to be in compliance with the state regulations, we have updated the minimum <laughs> qualifications for specification in the education and experience. Human Resources supports these changes and recommends that the commission adopt the modification to the classification specification of environmental health technician as presented. Okay, I guess, uh, do we have a motion to approve? Also move. Okay. Okay. Second. Could I ask a question, Terry? Certainly. Once we get it up there, we can. Oh, okay. Talk. All right. I'll second then. Okay. So let's, let's have some comments, discussion. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so I guess my question is 30, so you're not requiring a degree. You're just requiring some part 30 semester, 30 semester units. Um, as the primary educational requirement? Is, is that what this is intending to say? That because is. A, or graduation from an accredited mm -hmm. college. So you, don't, so you don't need a full degree. That is, is there someone that was gonna say something? Oh, sorry. Um, that is correct. <clears throat> With the code of regulations, the H, uh, we've updated it to the experience section of the CCR that is listed. We've taken the language directly from CCR as they recommended to the department. 
Okay. And so with those 30 semester units, they need to be from an accredited university or college within the, um, the listed disciplines. It mm -hmm. can't just be any 30 units. Um, it needs to be directly from one of the disciplines. Okay. And same with the quali qualifying experience, because that, that seems like it's not as broad as the education area. It, it just refers to the hazardous material management. Correct. Okay. Hmm. All right. Just seems odd. That's, that's fine. I just wanted to clarify. Okay. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the environmental health technician specification. Uh, roll call. Commissioner Evia? I didn't hear you. Okay, I got you. Commissioner Beth Michelle? Aye. Commissioner Harden? Aye. Commissioner Munoz? You know, I just feel I'm going to have to abstain. Uh, Denise gave me a bunch of stuff to read, and I read everything once through. So I think I'm going to abstain, and, and to be okay. honest, and uh, um, yeah, that's what I have to do. And Chair Poplowski. Aye. Okay. Uh, motion carries by a vote of uh, four to abstain, I guess. I don't know how we say that. Yeah, four, four, four eyes and one abstain. I, want to abstain. I, just, I feel comfortable having read it once through. And uh, I'll have to admit, it was uh, dry. <laughs> it is. Yes, yeah. that is part of it the job, hard. reading yeah. a lot of this dry stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I had to question also the uh, 30 degree, uh, 30 uh, units, you know, uh, for that classification. Right. I'm more bachelor degree oriented. Gotcha. Well, oftentimes these things get kind of lesson because it's hard to recruit for I positions. Understand. Totally understand. Yeah. So and this was coming from the state as I understand. So we're pretty much uh, not making it up here even. It's coming from the state of California, which felt we needed to modify what we were doing. Yeah. Well, that's why I probably should have stayed to be a, a smart voter. <laughs> okay. So we have passed the first one, and the next one is which? So we, are we moving on to the accountant? Yep. I see Shamise is here this morning. Yes, thank you. This is Brandy again, um, HR. And this with this presentation, the accountant auditor series one, two is being presented as a new classification. And Shamise is also here to speak to the, to the commission if they have additional questions. Um, we are combining, we ask that we combine the auditor and the accountant into one classification. And we would abolish the accountant and we would abolish the auditor classification. Um, we've also, in the modif in the new spec, modified the MQs uh, to open up the candidate pool to more people as the department is experiencing trouble in recruiting um, others to the position. Shamise, oh. do you have anything? Good morning, Chair and Commissioners. I'm Shamise Cubison, Acting Auditor Controller. So <clears throat> we've experienced some difficulties with these positions over the last several years. The accountant used to be the entry level position and the auditor, the um, advanced uh, position. And um, with the cough study, it, it definitely had some issues with the way the salaries ended up. And um, we've also had some challenges with recruiting because there's a lot of times when we actually have somebody who, who may have, you know, could have five years, 10 years, 20 years of experience, but they may not have a college degree. And if the specification requirements are narrow enough, it essentially eliminates a good number of applicants that we, we would likely want to consider. We have um, flown both of these positions, um, I think two or three times over the last uh, two years, and we only get about three applicants each time. And um, two of those times, there's only been one local candidate and the others have been from out of the area. 
um, other states, even which we generally have a, a difficult time actually uh, enticing somebody to come work here. So we're really looking to be able to have an entry level and an advanced level. And a lot of the, the duties are, are somewhat overlapping and, and really advanced is, is based on their ability to work more independently after they've gained enough experience. Um, sometimes it's just experience in government accounting, but we really uh, need to be able to open the applicant pool and also have an entry level if that's what we really need in order to grow a candidate into the more advanced um, pool. So that's what we're really hoping to do. Okay, uh, one thought I have is it seems to me it would make sense for us to approve all of the new class specs in one motion. I don't, unless somebody else feels differently, I don't see any reason to separate each one. So I entertain a motion to that effect. Oh, yeah, I, I, okay. I'm, I've got a bunch of questions and this is both of, I mean, these, um, this. Uh, I do too, so. Yeah, and this is the, um, it's we're kind of right up my alley of expertise. So um, <laughs> I don't, I, I, yeah, I don't, I'm not ready to move that we accept them. I, I'm not, uh, yeah. Well, do so you want to do? has a motion, that's fine. Would it be better to do? each one separately then and yes let's do that terry let's do, okay. let's discuss let's okay. discuss these before we do anything okay see if we can amend or answer everybody's questions that's my okay, okay. so the first one is the accountant auditor one class spec uh it's customary to make a motion to approve it and then pick it apart. <laughs> so, do we have? Do we have enough? Do we have anybody who's willing to make a motion to accept them? Um, I'll I'll make a, a motion to accept so we can discuss and yeah. maybe a, you know we'll see what happens. Uh, just right. so we can have discussion, and because if we move and second it, then we can discuss it and. If we find that we don't want it, we could vote it down <laughs> when when the motion. That's right. That's is right. Yeah. Okay. That's I'm right. fine with that. Okay. So, do we have a motion then? Yes, I'll move. Okay, Marilyn will move. Second. Well, Sherry's. I don't know where Sherry is. I'll second. <laughs> okay. So it's been moved and seconded. So. Uh, it's now open for discussion and comments. And uh, you want to go first, Jenny? Sure. Um, this might be a human resource question, but lately we've been having um, the one and two in one spec with the with the journey level explained, um, you know, separated out as an as an explanation of how it differs from the first level. And because there's so much overlap in these, I was just wondering what the thought process was for having completely separate specs versus um, the auditor controller one and two. I can, thank you for the question. I can uh, start with that. And Denise, if you want to pick up after myself in answering, that would be helpful. We have discussed at length the combination of a one, two series on one specification. It is the, at the request and uh, at, of the recruiting department to have them separated in the process of recruiting. So it is a cleaner and easier way in the system that we utilize, and that is through NeoGov. Okay, so we're gonna going forward. We'll expect to see the uh, class specs separated like this. I yes. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So then to my in the essential duties. Um, so we specifically call out internal controls, perform audits, reconciliation. Um, and the related activities to ensure accuracy and that adequate internal control, sufficient security, et cetera. But down in the knowledge, skills, and abilities, there, um, 
isn't anything that addresses internal control. So not there, I would have... I would have hoped there'd be something in the knowledge section about an understanding of control environments or in the skills with identifying control points. Um, so I can go point by point or I can just give you my overview and then we can go through and discuss them. How would you like me to proceed? Well, I can um, start with that under the new classification, there is under the knowledge area, um, a bullet point that does say internal control systems. It's under knowledge, knowledge of internal control systems. It's fourth from the bottom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, missed it. Wow. Okay. Okay. And then in the um, abilities. Okay. That, okay, good. That's good. I completely missed that. Um, so why is tracked asset forfeitures pulled out separately? I'll defer to Shamise. You know, honestly, I'm not sure why that's left over from the prior classifications, um, the two different classifications, just depending on it was a, an added duty um, to the prior auditors, uh, the auditor level, the staff auditor level, <clears throat> is to... Um, Asset forfeiture kind of has a couple of uh, processes to it in terms of we get information from the district attorney and we mm -hmm. move funds out of um, kind of a temporary account into a, a permanent account to distribute once it's been determined that they've been forfeited. Okay. So I was thinking that it might be a specific, um, more of a specific task that one person handles because it just seems... It seems like it fits into the bullet points three and four, analyzes financial information and anal maintains and analyzes a variety of grants, funds, tax projects. So um, I just didn't understand why it was called out. And um, uh, so this level one person is going to train other staff and serves as a lead professional. So those two seem like they would be higher level positions, um, but I don't know how your staff functions. So if level, if a level one person is gonna be training others. Well, a lot of the, the staff in the auditor's office by, um, by the nature of the job <laughs> of the auditor is providing training and guidance to other department staff um, and in other departments, as well as within perhaps the auditor's office, but we're often providing you know, guidance and training to those people who may be entering journal entries at the department level, and they may not really understand necessarily, you know, all of the implications of what they're doing, or we may need to be, um, you know, explaining why their why their spreadsheet doesn't quite support what we're looking for. Okay. So, you know, that could be provided at various different levels, or you know, unfortunately. You know, it's not, we can't be completely specific and say you're not going to be training or we're not because we don't want somebody to then say, well, you know, it's not in my, it's not in my spec. So I don't, I don't, you know, somebody else is to provide that okay. you know, direction. I didn't realize other departments are entering journal entries. So that makes sense. That makes complete sense. Okay. And then you're, so, and then, okay. And then nor what I've seen in other specs is that under, I think it's usually under abilities, um, establish and maintain effective working relationships with others. So did I miss that also? That's there, that one's there too. Okay, all right, so those, um, those were all my comments. Marilyn, you had other comments? Uh, yes, to tag on to yours, that was uh, mine's <clears throat> kind of, was, you know, under, because we talked about the things of training other employees there, should, you know, under the supervisor exercise, and it says no supervision exercise, where the other accountant says, you know, may exercise technical direction uh, over, you know, blah, blah, but does not provide direct supervision. Should there be something up there because it does note in two different uh, ones under the examples of <clears throat> essential job function just 
I just thought I would throw that out. I didn't know if uh, that needed to be clarified up there or not, Shamise. So these positions do not provide supervision. Supervision has to do with doing employee evaluations and discipline um, of other employees. And so these positions might be providing technical direction and technical training, but these positions that's, do that's not. That's what I mean. That's what, I'm not going to interrupt you, Shmi. That's what I mean. That's under the regular accountant position. It said it does not exercise supervision, but it does, uh, you know, exercise technical direction. So with that, because of the training, I, so that's where I was going with this, but maybe maybe we don't need to go there. So I just thought I would throw that one out to, to, to see if that needed to be included or not. Okay, it sounds like we have had some comments, but we have not really modified this no, spec. Terry, Terry, I have one more question. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, no and that is under the uh, <laughs> minimum qualifications uh, required under the original accountant, under the substitution at, at the very end, it said uh, closely and five years of progressively responsible professional level accounting bookkeeping experience where this one only uh, indicates uh, uh, two years. So I didn't know, is that because this is more of an entry level job? I, I, I just well, the one, some the one is entry level and the two is more advanced. And so if you'll right. note, there's, there's a combination of experience with education or more experience with less education. Right, right. Okay, it just, it was, it's just kind of like, if you, if you read all the ORs under the original accountant, not, not the auditor, you, would, you know, it would just seem like the education seemed less. I can under, also add on to that. Oh, is okay. sorry about that is that you know further down in the education it is we have now added um, uh -huh. additional years for experience can be substituted for year to year basis oh, so okay. in the Maybe event that's... that they don't have the education the experience um okay. from year to yeah. year will be also included okay and, and marilyn of what i've Thank seen in the work that I've done with different municipalities is that everybody's really struggling to hire finance I know. people. And every, all the specs I've seen lately have been moving towards reducing the experience on the lower levels to try to get people in and then utilize on the job training to get people up to speed. So I think that's part, I, and Shamise mentioned that they have a difficult, they're having a difficult time yeah. recruiting. And I just was clarifying, I figured it was probably because it, they were making it more of an entry level <coughs> job as the, the one position. So thank you, lady. And I had just one other just clarification for my own mind. I was looking through the county specs and is, is there a, uh, is, the, is the accountant auditor one the entry level position into the auditor controller's office, or is there a um, a more entry level position? I, I well, could we, the auditor's office has um, we have staff that review all of the accounts payable and purchasing um, items before they're paid, and those are actually account specialists threes, twos, and threes. And they're not really um, expected to be uh, performing general ledger type work. They are simply reviewing for um, that something's been purchased according to the purchasing policy, either through purchase order or, you know, what authority that it's entered into the system with the correct, you know, date and amount and invoice number. But there, that is is truly an entry entry level. I would say that the new positions, the one and two, those are the entry level to the more advanced um, positions in the auditor's office that more have more general ledger responsibility. Okay, got it. That makes sense. Okay, all right. Thanks. 
I have a question. I've got some questions. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, so there was a whole reorganization, it appears, of that would that the Board of Supervisors passed, um, combining the auditor controller position with the treasurer tax collector position. And I'm a I guess I'm assuming this is a fallout from that from that happening. Um, I'm just, I guess I'm trying to wrap my head around why, why we're doing this, why the county is doing this. Um, to sit, you know, originally these two positions were separate, the accountant and the auditor. Um, and how is this going to, if the two departments are now meshed, how will these two positions mesh with the treasurer tax collector department? I'd love oh, it if you could speak to that. I'd be happy to. So these positions uh, were requested to be um, reclassified before the consolidation of the two offices. These positions are accountant and auditor are to the auditor responsibilities and they are not to the treasurer's side. So uh, the board did take action to consolidate the office of the auditor and the treasurer tax collector. However, we are required to maintain a separation of duties between the functions in the treasurer's office and the functions in the auditor's office. This, these two positions will not be performing treasury functions. They, they cannot now by newly combined office, they still have to maintain their separation of duties. There will likely be additional positions that may need to come forward as a result of that consolidation. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much you want me to talk because that's not really your subject on the agenda right now, but we will be looking at um, in the future, the position essentially, um, I guess by default, because I am the only uh, candidate that, that submitted papers and that deadline has already closed. So essentially, it's it's going to be one of the department head positions has been eliminated, and we will need to bring forward a management level position because there still is higher level um, full time equivalent work that needs to be performed. And so we will be bringing forward at some point, probably in the next six months, a new classification in order to um, handle some of those other duties. So this is not a function of um, as a result of that consolidation. So then what, if that's not a function of it, uh, I guess I'm wondering what is motivating this change here? Why consolidate um, the accountant and auditor positions here? Um, I know you have, there's levels one and two, but why not just keep them separate? There are issues with the duties overlapping to some extent, and there's compaction between the two positions now. There's not enough separation, and there's not no longer really an entry-level position um, because the qualifications are still uh, deterring applicants. So we're not able to underfill it with another you know, classification within the department. So at this point, we're not able to recruit somebody kind of at a, at a lower level and grow them because the classifications for both are still too restrictive. And so in order to kind of avoid confusion about what we're actually trying to hire for and to have an entry level and an advanced position that is clearly defined as entry level or more advanced, we need the classifications to be, um, you know, essentially a, a one and a two rather than, well, some of the duties of the auditor are still also some of the duties of the accountant. Um, it's created a lot of confusion we and I don't honestly I I I think when you read them the old versions they were that I would hope that somebody would apply for both if they were applying for both but they don't I get different applicants and and yet they're still not qualified in um in in either category so I'm not I'm trying to adjust the confusion but I also have issues within the department of people who who were you know we're trying to we don't have enough staff to be able to say well you can only be an accountant and you can only be an auditor. You know, we are not a large enough organization to be able to have, um, you know, those completely separated duties. So, and you may not want to get into this. So 
I heard you say there'll be a separation between the account auditor portion or side of the department and the treasury tax collector side, that that's mandated, mandated that that exists that way. So I'm wondering if that's mandated, how can the top position not be mandated and have all of those, all of those um, responsibilities in one position when it's, what I heard you say was they had to be separate. Well, the, the treasurer tax collector staff will likely still report to a, an a, um, assistant department head that is going to be on the treasury tax collector side and the audit and reporting uh, staff will report to an assistant on the that side. So the department is still going to require, you know, two assistant department heads essentially, but they'll have different tracks of responsibility and reporting authority. And then uh, another requirement of the combined office is actually a, a, an additional outside audit to ensure that we have maintained the separation of duties. So can I interrupt? We're kind yes. of way off topic. We so, are. Yeah, we definitely are. Thanks, Denise. We Thank don't you. need to rework what the Board of Supervisors yeah. did, whether we think it was wise or not. So uh, Thank I you. think we, we need to stick to this specification and we've got one that we have uh, had a motion to approve and second and as I was saying previously it does not seem like we modified it so I think we should uh, proceed with the roll call. Okay. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Beth Michelle. Uh, aye. Uh, Commissioner Harden? Aye. Commissioner Munoz? Being that um, I'm more familiar with stuff like this, uh, having written grants for the sheriff's office and uh, actually worked for a CPA going through college, and I helped manage uh, an estate, a large estate. I'm basically the, the low level bookkeeper, and I submit uh, all the stuff that I do to a CPA who happens to be my sister. And uh, so I'm, I feel comfortable voting for this. Yes, hey, aye. Uh, Chair Poklowski? Aye. And Commissioner Hedion? Aye. Okay, so it's been approved. The accountant auditor one class specification as presented. So now we move to the account Auditor two classification. So, do I have a motion for approval? I'll move. Second. I'll second. Okay, I'll it's been second. moved and seconded. Uh, so, let's have any kind of discussion uh, comments people want to make. Does anybody have anything? I got my questions answered already. Okay, I did, I did too. Okay, that sounds simple. Then we don't have any modifications. So. I think we're ready to uh, have a roll call. Commissioner Harden? Aye. Commissioner Munoz? Aye. Chair Poplowski? Aye. Commissioner Ebium? Aye. And Commissioner Beth Michelle? Okay. Aye. Okay. Motion carries so unanimously. So you. we have approved the accountant auditor to position. And from here, we go to the accountant. I guess what we've done is to prove everything that needs to be approved, and we want to abolish, and we want right. to change up positions of, of incumbents. Is that kind of where we're at next? So on the agenda, as I see it, we have the abolishment of the accountant classification specification as the next item. Um, 6C. Yeah, do you wanna do both C and D together? They're both the, the abolishments. I'm, uh, I'm fine with that. Okay, sure. can we have a motion to that effect? Um, excuse me, I sure. think we need to agree to uh, or rather approve if we are going to reclassify the 
the existing incumbents before we abolish their existing position. Okay, that logically makes sense. So uh, I guess we want a motion then to deal with the, yeah, I guess I don't see this on the agenda per se, the approval. On the sick. on the memo, recom, uh, recommended motion B is to approve the reclassification of the accountants and the auditor incumbents to so, an accountant auditor two position. So that's way up on top of this whole thing here, right? Yeah. Then I'll one move, question. I'll, one I'll move to um, reclassify the incumbents to the accountant auditor accountant two position. Okay. We have a second. I'll second. Okay. So it's, I, I was waiting for Sherry. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. I have one question on this uh, top memo. You've got the recommended motions, and then you have the summary of the recommended motions, and they sound they look identical to me. I mean, what is the what is that about? Just I'm reading them. Yeah. That is true. The recommended motion is um, at the request. That's what we are recommending. And then we restate in summarizing what the recommended motion is uh, that we're requesting to do. And so it is a duplication and with a little bit of change of verbiage. Okay. It just seemed kind of odd to me. But anyway, we have a motion to move, moved and seconded to uh, reclassify the uh, incumbents. So roll call. Commissioner Munoz. Commissioner Munoz. Art, you hear us? Oh, okay. What, what did you say? We're I'm calling roll call. We're roll call. What, what, how did you pronounce my name? Munoz. Oh, okay. It's Munoz. Okay, I'm sorry. Munoz, sorry. But the field there on the end. Yeah, Munoz. Hi. Okay. okay. Uh, Director or a commission uh, Chair Poplowski. Aye. Commissioner Ebium. Aye. Commissioner Beth Michelle. Aye. And Commissioner Harden. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, so now we have successfully reclassified the uh, accountant and <laughs> auditor incumbents into the new class specs that we have approved. Now, it does seem that it would be appropriate to abolish the other positions. So could we have a motion combining the abolishment of those two positions? I'll move to abolish the classifications of accountant and auditor. I'll second. second. Okay, second. it's been moved and seconded, so it's roll call. Chair Poplowski? All right. Commissioner Evian? Aye. Commissioner Beth Michelle? Aye. Commissioner Harden? Aye. And Commissioner Munoz? Aye. Motion Aye. carried unanimously. Okay, so we have abolished those positions. Okay. And that is the uh, class studies item six. And uh, thanks for attending, Shamise, and clarifying. Thank you all. Right. And so now we go to other business of which there seems to be none. And then uh, we have the human resources director report. So is that uh, Denise today or? Uh, good morning, Denise Bartlemay, HR manager. Yes, that's me today. And I did want to say in the beginning, we didn't um, introduce uh, Commissioner Munoz from District 1. So I just wanted to acknowledge him in the meeting and tell him thank you for joining. So welcome. And uh, for item one, or my number one, Sherry Johnson, Deputy CEO, is currently has oversight over HR. And she is working with an ad hoc committee to on the HR director recruitment. So that is still in process. And Sherry joined us today. Right. CEO Carmel Angelo is retiring March 19th. And the assistant, no. yeah, assistant CEO Darcy Annell has been appointed as the interim C CEO effective March 20th. 
And we also have two people leaving HR this week, so we're, we're going to miss them. Kelly Tucker, one of our HR analysts, you've seen her before clerking the commission meetings. She's leaving, um, moving out of the area, and she's been with HR for about six years. This Friday is her last day. And tomorrow, Maureen Lawrence, an HR technician, is retiring from the county, and she's been with us for about 12 years. Tomorrow is her last day. And that is the end of my report. So it sounds like you're uh, going to be on the downside of personality. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sounds like you're going to be recruiting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes, we will. Okay. Well, thank you for that report, Denise. And we'll be seeing some new faces, it looks like, in the future here. So with that, I will call this meeting to adjournment at uh, 941. Okay. Good thank job, you. Jerry. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank Have you. a good day.